England in the Middle Ages. The sun is shining, the birds are singing, the children are playing in the village square. What a wonderful time to be alive! Hey, you're dying of dysentery. And also we're being raided by Vikings. What an awful time to be alive! It's the year 900. Europe is a Viking's wet dream. Raids galore. Hey, you want to go raid Paris? Okay. That particular raid didn't go too well, but the King of the Franks said, You guys are pretty tough and scary. How about we give you land in northern France, and in return, you protect us from other Vikings? And it was agreed. The Vikings set up the Duchy of Normandy, and then they went full-on French, converting to Christianity, learning the language, and making babies with the locals. England also had its fair share of Viking problems. In the 800s, Danish Vikings had conquered most of the country, but the Anglo-Saxons eventually managed to kick them out, although they left behind a bunch of Viking settlers. Now this guy's king. He sucks. Replace him with his brother. And he was like, Hey baby, how you doing? And had a son, and then turned around and was like, hey baby, how you doing? And had another son. And then he died and no one was sure which son to make king. This one, because he's older. Not if I have anything to do with it. That works for us too. Then he grew up and married the Duke of Normandy's daughter and had a bunch of kids. Remember this one. He's important. Then his advisors came to him and said, hey man, all those Viking settlers that are living here, they might band together and kill you. Well then why don't we kill them first? And so it was. This pissed off the Danish king, who launched an invasion and the Vikings conquered England once again. Then the Anglo-Saxons unconquered it, then the Vikings reconquered it. The king's family had to go into exile, including Edward. Remember him? He went to Normandy where he lived for 30 years. He and his brother Alfred tried to return to England to retake the throne from the Vikings, but they were betrayed by the Earl of Wessex who said, Hey friend, I'll take you to London where all the nobles are waiting to make you king. Oh no, look out, red hot poker in the eyes. I can't see. And thus you can't be king. Edward then escaped back to Normandy. After a few more Viking kings came and went, one finally died without an heir, and Edward was called back to England where he became king. And that's where our story begins. Here's the thing about becoming a king in the Middle Ages. Often your entire country won't support you at first. You can be vulnerable to rebellions, and it's up to you to take control. Fortunately for Edward, there was already a super powerful guy who had a lot of control over England, and if Edward could get his support, then England would be his. Who is this guy? Aw, oh, piss, it's the guy who gave my brother the red-hot poker in the eyes. After an awkward moment where Edward exiled Godwin from the country, he eventually had to give in and let him keep his earldom, possibly after Godwin gave him a bunch of gold and said he was very, very sorry. King Edward also married Godwin's daughter. Then Godwin died, and his massive fortune was passed down to his sons, who all became earls. In particular, this one became the new Earl of Wessex. Harold Godwinson was now King Edward's brother-in-law. He was a close advisor to the king, a brave warrior who had proven himself in battle against the Welsh, and in many ways he was almost like a co-king. Uh-oh, Edward got old and he's on his deathbed. Possibly for religious reasons, or maybe because he wasn't happy about having to marry her, he didn't boink his wife, and as a result has no kids, meaning there's no obvious heir to the throne, meaning I'm gonna be king. He does have a grandnephew, it could be him. Hmm, now let's go with me. Just one problem. I mentioned that Edward's mother was a Norman. Edward grew up in Normandy, and he had a lot of Norman friends. The current Duke of Normandy was William the Bastard. Why was he called the Bastard? One day, his father was sneaking out of his castle when his advisors said, Where are you going? Uh, to the tanner's shop. Why? To get a... Tan. But that was a lie. Firstly, because tanners give you leather, not tans. And secondly, because he was really going to see the tanner's daughter. One thing leads to another, and out comes baby William. Born out of wedlock. Thus, an absolute bastard. His father died when William was seven or eight, and he became the new Duke. He spent most of his childhood narrowly avoiding assassination, which probably turned him into the big balls tough guy he's remembered as today. In 1051, the town of Alessant tried to rebel against him, and the townspeople beat on dead animal skins as an insult to his commoner mother. William was furious, and he responded by, well, let's just say it wasn't pretty. That's the kind of guy we're dealing with here. William and Edward were good friends, and Edward allegedly promised that William could have the English throne after him. A decade later, Harold Godwinson even visited William and pledged an oath to him over holy relics, promising that William could be the next king of England. Although it's possible Harold only did it because William was holding his family hostage. So when William heard that the king was on his deathbed, he said, Hooray! I'm gonna be king! So now you have two extremely powerful men who both think they're about to become the next king. But wait. This guy is the king of Norway. He spent most of his life as a warrior for hire, fighting for whoever would give him the most gold. You name a place, he probably fought a war there. Poland? Yep. Estonia? Yep. Against pirates in the Mediterranean? Yep. The Holy Lands? Sicily? And Bulgaria? Yep. He got crazy rich off the back of it and was swimming in gold. Then he returned home and became king. One of the previous Norwegian kings had made an agreement with one of England's Viking kings, saying that when that Viking king died, the king of Norway would get the English throne. Hardrada felt that because of this agreement, he was now entitled to the English throne. He was also eager to go on one last big conquest that would turn him into a legend. So when he got word that Edward was on his deathbed, he thought, I'm going to invade England, and then I'm going to be king. 
So now we have three extremely powerful men who all think they're about to become the next king of England, and that means somebody's probably about to get hurt. Back in England, Harold Godwinson is watching over the dying king, Edward. Suddenly, he comes out with a shocking announcement. Hey, uh, everyone, gather in. That's it. Come closer. Don't be shy. Okay, so I've got bad news. The king is dead. Um, I know, very sad. Uh, but good news. He said that I should be the next king, so hooray for me. And, um, oh yeah, he said that if he once told anyone else they could be king, that he doesn't like them anymore, and they should just stay in Normandy. And also he said that no one should ask any further questions. Okay, good talk. Good talk.